Hello, Leos, and welcome to your 2025 yearly horoscope. All right, so let's uh, dive straight into this year's energies. And here, as we start the year, we've got Mars still retrograding in your sign, but Mars will retrograde into Cancer on the 6th, 7th of January, which is your 12th house. So lots of introspective energy as you begin the new year, which could also make you, on the one hand, uh, want to reassess, reevaluate. It's a great time for really thinking carefully of on what is it that you want to achieve this year. It's a really important year with uh, Uranus, Neptune, Saturn temporarily changing signs uh, into Aries and Gemini here, Uranus. Uh, also, we've got the nodal axis uh, shifting into brand new signs. So lots of brand new energy, so, which also means major shifts uh, on a personal and collective level as well. So here, the start of the year might be a little bit slow on a slower scale. Maybe there could be a, a little bit of that introspective energy connected to withdrawal, contemplation, re-evaluation, spiritual contemplation, and this sort of dynamics. Now, on the 29th, uh, the nodes change signs. The north node moves into Pisces. The south node moves into Virgo. That's your second and the eighth house. So you've already had an eclipse uh, in Pisces in September 2024, which uh, activated your eighth house of transformation, regeneration, and deep emotions, healing energies, investments, inheritance. So here this year, we've got um, one eclipse uh, in Pisces and two eclipses in Virgo. However, here with the nodes um, moving into these brand new signs, these brand new houses for 18 months. So overall, we look at the bigger picture here, 2026, 20. 25 to 26. These are years connected to financial growth changes, which would also indicate a potential job change, uh, or perhaps if you've been wanting to uh, have your own business or uh, move to a different organization or generally change what you do, then this is a time, great time for doing so because Generally, we need to act with the energies. And here, these energies are activating your financial houses, which means that you can implement some positive changes here, especially if you feel like you're not fulfilled uh, in these areas of life. You're not earning enough. If, if you feel like you're not reaching your full potential and um, there isn't enough financial stability and security in your life, this is your chance for changing it because uh, here in March, there is a lunar eclipse in Virgo. And then in September, we've got the solar eclipse in Virgo and a lunar eclipse in Pisces. So this is without a doubt a big, big year. What this could mean, it could mean many different things from my observation over the last few years. I've seen generally people with um, the second and the eighth house um, access being activated, uh, they set up new businesses, uh, they changed jobs, um, they got better jobs, better um, financial uh, opportunities, overall prospects. Uh, what I've also seen, this could be also related, if you're going through a divorce, this could mean that you are going through also um, financial changes. So in a way that uh, that shared and joint um, finances, resources are being split and divided during this time. This is also about being financially independent. Now, having said that, wherever the North Node is present, this is when the support from the universe is more activated. The South Node is about shifting away. You've got the South Node in the second house. So this means that you will be moving away from certain um, habits um, when it comes to dealing with money, managing your finances so there is a need to move away from the old way of either earning money managing money something needs to change here whatever that you've been doing has fulfilled its purpose it's time for a for new and fresh energy so we've got a shift and this could also indicate the cluttering getting rid of things that you don't need this could be also about making major purchases, major financial decisions as well. I've also seen people buying or selling uh, property as well. So we're dealing with investments here the, where the North Node is present in the eighth house. This is when generally support from other people uh, or external support is more available. It's more at hand. So it might be that um, someone else 
will help you to find a better job or will help you financially, support you financially, whether this is a friend or a family member or a partner, whatever it is here, you are luckier when it comes to receiving support rather than establishing something purely um, through your own efforts uh, independently. Uh, we have the, the very final eclipse in Aries in uh, March, at the end of March at eight degrees. The very final eclipse in this cycle, the nodes would have already been uh, or will have already been in Pisces and Virgo. This is the ninth house. So here, some brand new beginnings uh, connected to um, an opportunity to broaden your horizons, to expand your um, wisdom in some way, whether this is a new course of study, amazing um, foreign trip, foreign connection, a business um international business affair, an opportunity to present some kind of work or project to a larger audience on a global scale. Maybe this is about publishing or launching a business uh, or launching a, a, a project, a book. This could be also connected to maybe becoming a citizen uh, of a certain um, country, wherever you are um, currently staying. Lots of different opportunities, but with the this eclipse being connected to the North Node, this means that you are moving forward, reaching um, your purpose in some way. Now we've got um, Mercury will be retrograde three times this year in the fire signs primarily. One of them is, of course, Leo. That's in July and August. In Aries, it's in uh, March and also in Sagittarius in November. So this is your first house, your fifth house and your ninth house. So Generally, 2025 is the year for you to expand your horizons, to reach your purpose, to reach your goals. It's, there is a lot of energy that is generally connected to your ability to move forward with your goals, with your dreams, to find the inner voice, to find the inner power, the inner strength. It's a very self-empowering year in many ways ways. But at the same time, you will be reviewing, reassessing your goals, your life philosophy, your belief system. This is about healing the inner child and uh, misconceptions you may have about yourself, about your ability to succeed, to achieve, and so on. Venus will be retrograde in Aries in March, then in Pisces in April. What it means is that here again, the area of your belief system, your life philosophy is going to be under a great review. But at the same time, maybe you will be reconnecting with someone from a foreign country, if a friend uh, or a love uh, partner that you haven't seen or spoken to for quite some time, this could be about reconnecting with a sweetheart as well. But generally, there's this energy uh, connected to reconnecting with someone who is from a different culture or background to yours, most likely. We've got a few outer planets changing signs. Um, first of all, Neptune on the 30th of March until October the 22nd. Neptune will move into Aries until October the 22nd. It will only reach the second degree of Aries though. So we get a little flavor of what we can possibly expect to happen between the 2026th and the 2039th. So a really massive window here. That's your ninth house and um, Saturn will also join Neptune here in May in May until September, only until the first, first, first and a half degree. So first of all, Saturn and Neptune represent very different energies. Saturn is all about structure, discipline, order, while Neptune is about um, spirituality, creativity, lack of boundaries, lack of structure, chaos even sometimes as well. So with Saturn in the ninth house, um, this is about taking a more of a disciplined approach when it comes to any legal uh, paperwork, documents, cases, when it comes to learning. Now, Saturn could also temporarily delay travels. Saturn could uh, maybe shrink your opportunities temporarily as well, because with Saturn, uh, very often we need to deal with uh, our responsibilities duties. There isn't that much time for fun and, and travel and recreations. Things can be quite limited during this time. But at the same time, this is when generally you're very grounded and you have an opportunity for slowing down, but also for 
engaging in activities, workshops, knowledge that can help you to make a significant progress when Saturn moves into your 10th house towards the end of uh, 2020s. Now with Neptune in the event, Neptune makes us dreamy, creative. I think this is a great transit for engaging in spiritual activities. Maybe you will have an opportunity to go on a spiritual retreat or um, find um, a coach, a mentor who will help you on your spiritual journey, spiritual awakening. These sort of dynamics are very much highlighted here as well. But I, I think also learning about different cultures. And uh, I think during the duration of Neptune and Aries transit, you will also have this really keen interest in, in the different architectures, cultures, art, but on a global scale. There could be opportunities for traveling quite substantially as well to places that offer that spiritual, artistic, creative vibe. But here with Neptune, this is about knowing when to stop. This is about setting clear and healthy boundaries with others. And I think this is also when you will have to have a clear understanding when it comes to your beliefs when it comes to your life uh, philosophy as well, because Neptune can also temporarily cloud your judgment. And if you're unsure about the direction you're heading in your life when it comes to your life direction in your life, then here with Neptune, if you're not grounded, you might make the wrong decision. So it's really important to be, to, to be able to distinguish the fantasy from reality during the duration of this transit to stay grounded but I think this won't uh, be difficult to achieve with Saturn being here initially for the first few years so during this time you have the chance to establish this solid foundation for yourself in your night house for the time when Neptune remains here after Saturn's departure. Now, simultaneously, Uranus will move into Gemini here again. It's just a little dip, uh, just to give us a little taste. Uh, Uranus will come here more per permanently in 2026, and that's uh, your 11th house. So a massive shakeup is coming up when it comes to your friends, uh, friendships, group you, groups you belong to, and tribes. And, and generally, I think uh, there's a lot to do as well with um, your long-term vision your long-term plans and goals. I think there is a big shake-up coming up for you um, in this regard, but I think maybe you're already feeling it. Maybe you have a need for a change. Maybe you have a need to change your surroundings, to change your environment um, to a certain extent, and this will be definitely achievable during this time. This could be also about um, working online, being a project manager, for example, and managing a group remotely, getting involved also in causes that are very close to your heart, something to do with humanitarian uh, matters, something connected to helping other people, something connected to helping other people to free themselves from any restricting environments, for example. Now, this transit could also bring a very unusual connections into your life, uh, very unusual to what you're used to. Now, finally, Jupiter will move into Cancer in the second part of the year, around um, the 9th of June, until June the 30th, 2026. So that's your 12th house. So here with Jupiter in the 12th house, here again, a strong connection to spirituality, a strong connection to understanding oneself on a deeper level, self-improvement, self-growth, self-development, and at the same time, a lot of energy also connected to understanding life on a deeper level. This is what I've got for you today. Thank you very much, and I wish you a pleasant and a productive year, and until the next time, bye for now.